and there you go <laughs> much better night and day night and day amazing dude i recorded like a fucking uh video today at the coffee we were <clears throat> with the, with this mic and we were super far away from the fucking uh road and i listened to the to the video you can hear the fucking honking me 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 i'm in vietnam oh man i'm not going to miss the fucking honking shit when we leave this place <laughs> fuck no oh, hell yeah <sighs> that's just terrible anyway boom okay all right i'm all set up okay great so this is sort of i don't know it's an informal podcast it's not even a podcast really it's just an audio as a video audio thing that i'm going to share on youtube but basically the idea is to talk about divi and and you know what i know what, what is a good introduction or what's a good sort of uh in, introduction to this to this topic i'm just going to open our site too just in case we need to look at any divi stuff um but recently i think it was today authority hacker the authority hacker guys they sent out an email uh, with their latest podcast, which is about their site redesign. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Remember you you talk about that. I did today. Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, you 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 talked to me about that. That it changed the template and they choose like uh, to work with not Divi but another one, uh, Builder. Correct. They they never did work with Divi, but they they were working with Thrive Architect or Thrive Content Builder plus mm -hmm. whatever their theme is. I think they had a custom theme on Authority Hacker and on their niche site, which is Health Ambition. They're, they're sort of, you know, rock their, what's the word I'm looking for? The site that they always talk about when they talk about authority sites, like Health Ambition is the model site. There they were using Thrive as well. Mm -hmm. Now recently, probably in the last, I don't know, six months to 12 months, there's been a few new builders come on the scene, especially, yeah. uh, uh, Beaver Builder and Elementor. Those are kind of the two big ones. And at the same time, there's been sort of an, a renewed interest in non-page builder themes like, I think it's Generate Press, which is, which is very coded closely to WordPress that uses, I think, custom fields rather than, than mm -hmm. you know, page templates and, and short codes and stuff. Mm -hmm. And an Astra theme as well. So Authority Hacker guys, switched over on their main site to Astra theme with Elementor. So Astra theme is the theme and Elementor is like a plugin mm -hmm. for, for page builders. And, you know, and in their, in their pro version, in their community, they've been recommending Thrive and, and Beaver Builder and all this stuff. And now they they're basically recommending Elementor. So a lot of people are like making a big switch. And, and the reason I wanted to have this chat is the thought that went through my head is like, all this time, we've just been doing Divi. We've just been using Divi. And it's been getting better and better. Mm -hmm. And it's super solid. It does everything we want. It has three different editors. And it's, it's fast. It's not as fast as Elementor. Okay, fine. But it's, Elementor is not a theme. It's, it's a plugin. So mm -hmm. Divi, is, Divi isn't even a theme. I look at it more as it's a framework. Oh, me too. <clears throat> Absolutely. So... Feel, feel free to expand on that. Yeah, no, I agree with, uh, I, I as well see it as a, as a framework. You can use DV Builder as a plugin, as an independent plugin. Then you can just connect with uh, whatever tem, uh, template you use. But I use, the, I use the DV theme with the DV Builder uh, inside and I, I consider it as a, as a framework because you can basically uh, modify absolutely everything in it. So you can make it look like absolutely whatever you want. There's really, really few um, stuff you can't do uh, with the DV Builder, the native, the native one, and you can extend it so much with the billion of plugins that are being created for, for DV since the, the DV team first generation being released. So yeah, yeah, that's a good point. It's because it's, it's, it's extensible. So a lot of people are making contributions uh, there's Divi Booster, and then there's all sorts of third-party plugins that extend the functionality uh, of Divi. Can you talk about 
the, the work that you're doing with, with our mutual friend and business partner, Josh, because I think it illustrates what you just said of you can make Divi look like anything, mobile, desktop, tablet, whatever. Yeah, yeah, sure. <clears throat> um, sure, yeah. So uh, basically, Josh, on, um, well, let's say like a SEO company, you do SEO optimization and uh, you also do um, lead uh, acquisition and stuff like that. So let's say it's a, it's a big agency. <clears throat> and so basically, uh, they will uh, work with website on two, three kind of different, um, uh, um, well, I can say, a project. They will have one uh, customer with no website, so they will need to create like a, a website uh, so they can the, the the agency can actually put content in it and optimize it and start working with it. Second, they will have customer with an actual website but is like outdated, so they will need to basically um, make like a new website based on the old one and make it look better, responsive, and. You know, so like recreate the old site, but with a modern theme up to date. Yeah, 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 kinda, kinda. Some will say just like recreate the website we have, <clears throat> our old website, and just make it like a little bit more modern. Uh, other will just like point out like a template or another website from competition they like and say, okay, I want this eater, this footer, I want this website way of presenting the blog and blah blah blah. <clears throat> and can I can I just interject and say that the reason a lot of customers would ask for this is because whatever, however their old site was designed, maybe it was like custom coded by a developer and all the pages are custom templates in WordPress, it's impossible to work with it as an administrator or, or for your team. So you yeah. need something more user friendly that's always the same, consistent, and is updated by developers and it's in the WordPress world, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And uh, yeah, we actually work with a, with a very, very big customer uh, of Josh um, recently. And this is the third kind of customer they get would be uh, a customer that already have a website. <clears throat> they like it. It's, it's modern, responsive and everything. But it has been code terribly. And uh, it's slow and it's full of custom field and like weird plugin to do this and this. Probably insecure. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes we'll, we'll be insecure the way, the way they use the, the, the plugin and everything. And so basically, the, the client wants to keep everything. Like, I like my website. I don't want to change it, but it's on WordPress and it's slow. So my job will be to use DV to literally copy past the exact website, uh, but just with DV. So, How do you do that? What's, what's your process for recreating or duplicating a website, but with Divi, is it? Well, um, I've, actually it's, it's pretty simple. I would just like set up um, a staging server. I will install like a clean Divi and I will just redo uh, the page um, one by one. So I will use as much as I can, like a really cool feature, feature of Divi, which is the ability to create a complete page template that you can reuse. And even like a portion of page, so I can just create like a let's say like a a, mod, um, a menu module uh, with the logo there and like a phone and whatever some some icon and everything. I can make this module a template, and I can basically reuse it anywhere on the website. And you have two kind of template you can use. You have the you have the global web, uh, uh, template, and you have the normal template. So the normal template you can. Um, duplicate it on any page. Then when you change it on page E and page E, uh, A, sorry, <clears throat> uh, it will not affect the same uh, template on page B and C. But with the global template, uh, if you change it anywhere, it will spread on the whole website. So basically, uh, for example, some, some, some client want like super special footer with like a lot of information in it. Um, so I will create like this massive footer and I will make it like a global template. So on every page I create, I can just like import this uh, footer template and it will be the same everywhere. And if I change something, it will just spread around the whole website. And can so, you, can you take like, let's say you, you have a contact page and you don't want the footer there. Can you exclude it from being included on that page? Well, you just don't include it. That's it. Okay, you, so I use global. the DV Builder and I just import the model there. So I will, ah. yeah, I will put the, the menu module, the content module, and the footer module. If I don't want the, the footer module, I just don't put it there. So how is that a global template? 
uh, it's, it's global in a sense of any modification that I do inside this model would be spread everywhere the uh, model right. is on any page. But you, you individually select which pages. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Gotcha. So uh, the, the first thing I will do is to look at uh, how much of those models I can create. So like, for example, the footer, I know it's going to be everywhere. So I will, I will create like this, this, this model and it will be a global one. So I'd look at everything that is static, that don't change regardless to the page you are. Usually it's the menu, menu, top menu, top header, footer. They are the, the thing that never change. They are the same on all the websites. So those one, I make, make them global. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, and after that, I look at everything I can uh, reproduce with model. And um, if they are uh, reproduced, uh, reproduce it on, um, if they show on different page, I would just like um, use the same model every time. So I try to, to make like everything like in a model. So I can just like when I create a page, say, okay, uh, install the menu module, the top header module, the blog module, then the footer module, boom, my, my page is created. And mm -hmm. you can also do a page template, like complete page layout that already include all the model. Uh, so that can be uh, really useful if you want to speed up the, the creation. And so then you basically, in terms of, you know, Divi has three builders. It's got a, a visual builder. It's got the, the wireframe builder, I think they yeah, call yeah, it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, just the classic sort of uh, builder. H how do you actually put together the site? Do you just go create your rows, your, your, your elements or? Uh, what do you mean? I mean, Visually, when you're building a site, let's say you're recreating another site, do you say, do you just like look at the the source site? Yeah, and and then just go, okay, cool. So they have like a two column, like fifty fifty. Okay, this is a one third, one third, one third column. Do you like columnize it? Yes, <clears throat> absolutely. Yeah, yeah, completely. Um, and uh, it's pretty cool uh, because like with the one of the last uh, DV uh, updates. Uh, because DV used to have like a uh, colon uh, pre, uh, pre-made when you use the, the DV builder, but they have like six different uh, uh, colon um, with the, the last version. And with the very new version of DV, they had like maybe six more. So now we have like really a lot of different uh, wow. type of column that we can use to, uh, to work with website, which is amazing. Like really like changed my life. It's about time. <laughs> oh yeah, it was about I mean, it's time. called Divi. You should be able to like Divi shit, right? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it was like one of the biggest uh, requests from the, the actually like a DV web designer, DV designer guy like me to have the ability to use more uh, colon type of, type of colon because the maximum of colon you, you, you could use uh, was like four, four colon and it's not enough. I mean, for, <laughs> it's really, really not enough. And um, oh, very good example with uh, actually one of your customer, uh, Crystal. Uh, she redo completely her website. She, she, she switched from, uh, from her old template to DV. And on the very landing page of her website, she basically, sh she, she was in need of like six, six colon to, 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 to arrange the content. So I have to basically, at the time uh, I work on this website, uh, DV hasn't uh, update the, the new column system. So I, I had to basically hack with CSS uh, the, the, the system to basically um, make it like six column. Mm -hmm. But it was like not really, really nice. Now I can just use like six column if I want it, which is perfect. So the, uh, that's a good example. So you redesigned our, our mutual customer Crystal's website from, I, I forget what she had before. It was some... Uh, it was, um, uh, not Gemini. Um, Genesis? Genesis. Oh, ah, yeah, Genesis. it was Genesis. Yeah, yeah. We, and it was pretty well designed actually. Yeah, well, Genesis is a very, very powerful um, framework. It's also a framework, <clears throat> but it's a very old one. So this, I would say like Genesis is made for developer. Uh, yeah, yeah. They, there's nothing visual there. Yeah, it's really for, uh, for, for coding. <laughs> and to be clear, you're, you have very limited development. You're a designer. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit of PHP, a little bit of JavaScript, <laughs> but I'm, I'm not a developer. Absolutely not. Okay. And so that's one of the appeals, appeals of Divi for you is that you don't have to be a developer, but you can accomplish pretty much whatever you want. And with some custom CSS will help for sure. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. you always use uh, some, some custom CSS at one point. Anyway, you can use custom CSS in any model on, on, on with the Divi builder anyway. So, mm. 
And so when you redesigned Crystal's site, one of the things that, one of the considerations, especially now with mobile search going up so much or it has been for a while is, okay, you've designed a very nice desktop layout. What, what about, how does the mobile look out of the box? How does the tablet look out of the box? And do you have to design them separately? Can you design them separately in Divi? Yes. So um, with the very first version of Divi, the, when you finish to, to build everything with the model and you, and you go to, um, to mobile, you have to uh, make some trick, some uh, change in every model to uh, make the text bigger, lighter, whatever. Uh, now with the very, new, the very last version, if you use like any model you use, if you don't touch anything, you just use them. When you switch to mobile, it looks great. Really? So, yeah. I didn't know about that. Uh, if you don't touch anything, and if you just use the model the way it is, they, they, they look good on mobile. But usually you're going to touch stuff. What you do you mean to if change... you don't touch anything? Oh, if you change like padding? Yeah, the, yeah exactly. Like padding, okay. the, size, the size of the typo, the, the, the size of the H1, H2. Like oh, you, if you have touch... to change those stuff. Yeah, but every, I, as I say, like if you just put the model and you will put like uh, fake text and fake content and fake image into it like right away, which is a cool option now. <clears throat> if you don't touch anything on that, it's already responsive and it works pretty well. But as soon as you change anything on the model, you need to change the, the thing you've changed on the mobile version as well. And how do you do that in Divi? Well, in Divi, on every model, <clears throat> well, now, actually, it changed a little bit. Mm. Uh, before, um, on, on every model, you, you used to have, like, the, the small um, phone icon um, close to your uh, whatever um, option you wanted to change on the model, like if you want to change the, the size of the typo. So you have, like, the, the number. On pixel then you have like the the icon for the phone and you have to click on it and it will show you like a like a tab with the phone and everything <clears throat> so now they they, they change the, they change the position of this uh, of this icon so now it's at the top of the model it's kind of the same thing you click on the on the phone on the phone model and it will just like switch the um, the the option for mobile so everything you would change when you in this uh, mobile option will affect only the mobile version of the website so didn't it used to be that you'd have to create, all right, let's say you, you're just optimizing for desktop and phone and you'd ha you have one module for desktop and you'd have to duplicate that module and make the first module visible only to desktop and make the second module you, visible. Okay, only. so um, you can do that. I still do this, it's de it, it depends of, um, okay, it's depend what you wanna do. Like every model, every model from DV can be, uh, um, trick for mobile uh, but sometimes uh, you want them the model to present completely differently or you want the model to just disappear on mobile because yes, you yes. don't you don't want it so it doesn't make sense it, on mobile like background yeah. splash images and stuff yeah exactly exactly yeah. that that kind of stuff so when when that happens yes you will you will need to uh, basically set up the model to just don't show up on mobile so it's just an option on model you can just choose through you go to visibility and you say I don't want this model to show on mobile well, I don't want this model to show on, on desktop. Then you can create a new one that will show only on mobile or only on desktop and make it look like the way you want. So sometimes sometime you, need, you need to do that. Do, do you have to do anything separate for tablet? I've always wondered this. I, I really don't know what the answer is. Like if you build the, the desktop version and the mobile version, where, where does that leave the tablet version? Okay, so uh, I have to admit that I don't really look for the, for the tablet because like now tablet, they... I mean, all, pretty much all of them, they are HD. So <laughs> like the, the, the iPad has a better resolution than my MacBook Pro. <laughs> so I, I don't touch the, the, the tablet version because it will show like it will show on the, on the desktop. Okay, so it defaults to desktop on the newer tablets, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm, so maybe that'll make the tablets optimization obsolete at some point in the future. Well, yes and no, I mean, you know, it's, you, you still can optimize it. I mean, um, because... Because it's a different resolution after all. Well, no, it's, not, it's not a different resolution. It's, it's literally the same resolution. It will be like HD on, on, a, on, on a computer will be like, uh, let's say, uh, one nine thousand something by 1,400 something will be the same thing on the tablet. So it will show exactly the same, the, the same way, maybe a little bit like um, smaller because it's still a tablet. So the, the actual physical screen is like smaller. But the proportions are the same. 
yes, the proportion of the same, the resolution, the quality, everything is the same, but maybe on tablets you want to, as you use your, your finger and, and, and you to navigate, maybe you want to remove some, some stuff. You don't want to show the menu. You want to show some big icon and stuff like that. So maybe you want to work on a special experience uh, for the user on tablet. But I never, I never really get that uh, yet for any, any client. And I guess you haven't heard any feedback saying, hey, this no, display is weird on my tablet. Or no, they, they, it's mobile and desktop. Mobile and desktop, okay. So, so what are some of the features that you really, you already talked about a few, but what are some of the features that you really appreciate about Divi? And maybe you can compare it to some of the other technology that you've worked with in terms of building, uh, building websites, not only from scratch, but also just from the point of view of, of a website owner, because you've got your own sites and your own businesses and stuff. Mm -hmm. and you have to maintain it and yeah um okay so i will say for sure one of the biggest cool thing that i really really like in dv is the ability to make the model uh, global and reuse them everywhere on on the pages and you will have just uh anything you would change on the model would just spread everywhere so that's a really really cool feature uh especially on big website <clears throat> saves a lot of time Oh yeah, you, if you, I mean, imagine you have like a 200 page website and the client say, oh yeah, finally on the footer, I don't want this picture. And you have to go on 200 pages to change the picture. <laughs> no, no thank you. Yeah. So that's that's really cool feature. Uh, I will say the ability to make visible and I mean to uh, disable, or make visible uh, model, depending on if you're on a phone, a tablet, or on a desktop, it's a really cool feature too. Which is now available on pretty much all of the major builders, to be fair. Yeah, like, yeah, uh, for sure. I mean, yeah. Even absolutely. click funnels, Elementor. Yeah, you have, you have to, basically. Yeah, if you want to play that game with the big boys, you have to have that feature. Yeah, that, that for sure. Um, what else? Well, obviously, like on every model, you have the, the custom CSS uh, section that I use a lot uh, that basically allow to um, use custom CSS on every uh, section of the model. So you can really like customize a model to look like whatever you want really mm -hmm. uh, directly into the model. You don't need to have like an external um, uh, CSS style sheet that you will just like uh, put all your modification. You can just do that directly into the, into the model. Uh, uh, and that's pretty cool. I use, I use that a lot. Um, and they recently introduced the, um, well, we don't use this, but they recently introduced the minification or the, the some performance yeah, yeah absolutely they do that automatically now <clears throat> and you can deactivate it but yeah well, i use i use um i use plugin to uh, to do the whole speed uh thing but that's cool that that they include it automatically with uh with dv that's pretty nice yeah and just to clarify for for anybody listening or watching <laughs> the the divi team they rolled out a feature where they basically help to make your site and your pages a bit faster by uh, making some performance <coughs> enhancements to your Divi pages. I think it's just minification was, was the only feature of that. But we, we generally use WP Rocket for all of our caching performance needs. So we, you have to disable that, otherwise they'll conflict. Yeah, I do the same. But um, if, if you don't have WP Rocket, which is you know pretty kind of expensive tool, um, that seems like a few hundred bucks per year, then well, okay, then you get it for free with Divi. You don't have to pay anything extra. Yeah, yeah, true. So yeah, that's um, all those options are, are pretty cool. Are pretty cool with Divi for sure. <clears throat> I really like. I just really like Divi. I think it would. I, I know we sound sure. like fanboys. <laughs> Divi, <laughs> uh, <sir>. Divi <laughs> for the win. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, the <clears throat> we are now, fanboys. Well, yeah, absolutely, no, yeah. sure, definitely. Yeah. Uh, they they had like um, in the, the the very last iteration, they had, they had a lot of cool stuff. <clears throat> so now, for example, so you were saying before that you have different uh, way of using uh, DV. So you can you can use it. Well, basically, you have two. It's uh, you were saying uh, three, but it's actually two. You can use the uh, the visual builder, and you can and you can use the uh, the wireframe uh, builder which is the same that where you not on Visual Builder and directly on the post or on the page that you edit, you see the wireframe, the wireframe one. So you have those two modes and you can switch all the time. But like the really cool one is obviously the visual one, especially for, for a client because they, they can just go on their website and they can change uh, text and picture and look exactly at what they do directly on their website. They don't, they, they don't need to go on the, on the WordPress backend 
just pretty cool. Right. And what Divi uh, had, um, uh, added uh, recently is the ability to copy past style from module to another. So for example, if you're, if you're on, a, uh, are on a page and let's say you use the, the blurb, the blurb model, uh, which is basically an icon, like a title and a content. Uh, and let's say you have like six of them on your, on your, on your page and you work on one of them and you change the color of the icon, the icon you change the, the typo, the size and everything, and you're pretty happy with it. Cool. Now you have five more uh, blurb uh, model to, to go uh, to do the exact same thing. Well, now, if you're on the, <clears throat> the visual builder, you can right click uh, on the model you're, you, are, you are editing and it will show you like a list of stuff you can do. And on this list, you have a copy model, a copy uh, section style, reset section style, uh, view modify style, modify style, and hmm. well, you have a bunch of them. But the cool stuff is like you can copy uh, the style of this model and go to another model, right click and select the past style model. And it will open like another pop-up that will um, tell you, do you want to put the style only on this model or do you want uh, on this blob model or do you want to put the style on every blob model on this page? Oh, nice, man. Boom. So it just I didn't even know about that. Yeah, well, that's, that's, awesome. that's kind of poor user um, uh, kind of thing that let's say like normal, user of DV, they don't really use them because they they a, a bit too advan advanced, sorry. But yeah, you can lock a model, you can dis disable the model. Uh, there's a lot of stuff you can do if you right click on a, on a model, you will see this, uh, this this menu. So that's that's super cool. Uh, the same way when you <coughs> when you edit a model now uh, and you you click on the on the gear, um, when you have the, the, the model setting, you, you click on model setting. Mm -hmm. And with the so you have this pop-up that will that will show up like let's say I'm still on the blurb the blurb model. If I click on edit this model, I will have the blurb sitting uh, box DV box that will open, and on this box I have the title, the content, and I can edit anything I want inside. And so back in the day with DV, back in the day, back in the day, so you have to uh, go on this. Uh, 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 pop-up box and uh, find everything you want to edit on the model, like the title, yeah, the yeah, H1, yeah. the content and everything. But now when the, the box is open, the blurb setting is open, if you over the model uh, with your mouse, uh, you will see like every section that, are, that is uh, editable uh, will have this uh, little icon, blue icon with a, with a pen in it. And if you click this, it will automatically load the blurb setting to the exact section of this edition. So if I highlight the, 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 the title, for example, and I click, and it's a H1 title, uh -huh. it will, inside the, 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 the blurb setting box, it will load the exact section to edit the H1 uh, title. So I don't need to look for it. I don't need to, check, to search for it. Mm. It's also like a huge life saver, uh, time saver, <laughs> when, you, when you work on, on the website and you're a power user. So that and you actually cool. just alluded to w one of the main features of Divi, it's not a feature of Divi, it's a feature of the company and of developers, which is that they're constantly getting feedback from the community, which is a huge community. I think they have Divi installed on like over a hundred thousand sites, according yeah. to their website, mm -hmm. which is crazy. And um. they, they constantly roll out new useful, actually useful stuff. So they're actually listening to their, to their users, to their power users and and making it easier to work with. And one thing that I've noticed a lot with working with member fix and stuff, working with various customers, is oftentimes some people have a sort of tech ADD, uh, which is not that they're not, not tech savvy, they're relatively tech savvy, but they'll start using a tool. Let's say they start using Thrive Content Builder and they're like, mm -hmm. oh, this feels pretty good, I like it. And then they get, they hit a roadblock, there's like something that they don't like, and they're like, Ah, I don't like it anymore. And then they'll switch to, to Elementor and they'll start using Elementor. Oh, Elementor is amazing. Bob, well, they could do all this. And then they'll hit a roadblock and there's something that they don't like about that tool. Yeah. And there's never going to be, and, and we talked about this before the call. I said the authority hacker guys switched from whatever they were using to Astra and Elementor. Mm -hmm. They're smart guys. They know what they're doing. They have a track record. They're successful. So, I'm sure they thought about this decision a lot, but a lot of times people will just like switch between membership plugins 
or mm. switch between themes or switch between autoresponders to be like, oh, I don't like active campaign. This is, you know, what's the number one complaint about active campaign. People say, I don't like the, the email editor. And to me, what? okay, okay, fine. That's a valid complaint, but is it such a big deal that you would like ignore all the other amazing th- and yes, the answer is yes. To some people, it's such a big deal. And then they switch to drip and they're like, oh, drip is amazing. And then after a month, they find all the things wrong with that. And then they want to switch again. This hmm. is a fundamentally counterproductive mentality. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> which is yeah. why, right? Because it just means you're giving up basically. It doesn't necessarily mean that, but just using Divi as an example, you had to convince me to start using Divi because I was using Optimize Press 2 or something. And the, the, you were, you, um, you were, I remember you were trying to convince me to use like an X template. <laughs> oh, dude, you should use X. It's amazing. And I was like, no, dude, I'm good with DB. And I'm like, no, no, use X. So I was like, oh, I'm good with DB. <laughs> and you know what, man? In, in the end, you, you persuaded me. And that was what, two, two three years ago? And we yeah. were using DB for all of our production websites, all of our, a lot of our customers' websites. And you just got to stick with something that is really good. That has a framework that can do everything you need to do. I can't think of anything as flexible in terms of like a theme WordPress theme. Well, I'm sure there's like other like flexible and cool, uh, WordPress theme for sure. Uh, the thing with DV is, uh, the community is huge, like really huge. I mean, like you have a shit load of plugin that you can use. If DV can, can do something that you want DV to do, there's like a good amount of chance that a plugin actually uh, exists and, and, can, and can do it for you. And, uh, and you know what? A good example is like I work still with Josh. Uh, we have this new client and I work on uh, a WooCommerce uh, website and I build completely with DV. And the, the, the client actually uh, send us like the spec for the website and they send us PSD. And they also send us like a template that they want to use. They say, okay, so that's the PSD that we created. The client valid, validate the thing. So the website needs to look like this. And this is the, the template we want to use. And that look like the template we created. So we want to use this uh, WordPress template. And uh, at the beginning, I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. You know, I will use the template and install it. And oh my God, dude. It's like you install the template and you know, like those templates, you install them. Then you have this pop-up that will show up immediately on the back end and say, Hey, for this template to work, you need to install 27 plugins, (laughs) begin the installation. And it's like, what the fuck? So you have a a naked WordPress, one template that will require like 27 plugins to be able to work. To do all the cool stuff. Not really 27. No, it's not really 27, but like it's more than 10. What? And it's, really? Oh yeah. Uh, what theme was this, man? I don't remember the name, man. But like uh, Revolution Slider, WooCommerce, uh, uh, three or four different plugins for WooCommerce to do special special stuff on the WooCommerce page. Uh, like a lot of stuff. The Builder, uh, plugin for the Builder. It was like more than ten, plus the optional plugin. So, and I was like. Okay, I'm going to follow this, and I follow install blah blah blah. At the end, I was like, "Oh my god!" I just like I was spending, I basically spent a day, a complete day of my time, and I work as a freelancer, so I build per hour. I spent a day, so eight hour of my time, just installing the template, and I wasn't even started to to build page or whatever. That was just the first day. So Gambe, I know that I, I knew that I have to look at the, the builder and how it works, understand how it works, understand how all the plugin work, the plugin I don't know. Can so it cost I just much money. Yeah, exactly. So I basically uh, send an email to Josh and say, hey, well, you know what? I mean, I can do it using what they want, but I'm going to use a lot of time doing it when I spend one day to just like install the template. I could in this one day, I could have created half of the website using DV. And maybe you couldn't have done it. You don't know because you don't know what's the capability of all that bullshit that you just installed. Yeah, you exactly. know Divi can do it 100%. 100%. So, and, um, so Josh asked the client if, it, if they were okay, me using Divi as if at the end the website looked the same. I said, yeah, okay, sure. I was like, yeah. So I installed Divi and obviously like in one day I do half of the job, like the page were created and everything. 
And my point was about like the, the plugin that can do stuff you cannot do with Divi. And so it's a, it's a e-commerce website and it's the second time I do an e-commerce website with Divi. And uh, this one, they, as I say, they design, they design every page already. Mm-hmm. So they already designed the, the product page and they are very special. So they have like the title for the product, picture, description, then a, a lot of other stuff that are not included in the normal WooCommerce pages. So Which starting, kind of templates, basically. Yeah, exactly. So starting there, you have like basically two solutions. It's using like um, a child tem for WooCommerce page. So you will basically duplicate the WooCommerce page and you will record them to look like the, 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 the template. But if you do that, <clears throat> it's going to be hard for the customer to actually uh, work with those pages. If they want to change something in the page, they will like, hey, well, can you do it? And you will have to go to the child template and do your stuff. So I was like, mm, what can I do with Divi? So I look in a little bit, like Divi already have some WooCommerce model, but they, it's not powerful enough to, to do the exact thing they, they wanted to do. So I was like, mm, okay, let's look at the community plugin, uh, the plugin that I created for the, from the community of Divi. And I find like an amazing plugin that do exactly what I want. It's a DV uh, uh, plugin for WooCommerce that will take basically everything you can do with WooCommerce as a model. So I can basically uh, edit a page and I can edit my product page, my WooCommerce product page, and I can like every single part of the product page is a model. Like the image is a module. The yeah, text. the image is a model. The title of the product is a model. The gallery is a model. The description is a model. The price oh, is a model. Dope. The actual card is a model. So I can just do absolutely whatever I want. I was like, yeah, amazing. Exactly what I mean. So that's my point. That you have a model for absolutely everything. And uh, that's what makes DV like so, so, so powerful. Uh, a part to be already like a very powerful uh, system, uh, framework to build a website. It's 90% chance you will find what you need if DV can't do it natively. Or have it built because if it's, yeah. if it's that easy to develop for DV, oh, yeah. it can't be that hard to. No, they have really good, really good API. Uh, it, they're really good with developer. They're really, um, they're really open. They really work with the community. So yes, absolutely. And you know what? You just, you just touched on a really important topic, which is a lot of times we're talking from our perspective, from the people doing the implementation, but from the perspective of the customer or the customer's marketing manager or their, the, the people who write their content, they all have to use the website on the back end. Yeah. And I mean, maybe they don't have to build landing pages, but they need to be able to, to do some basic shit. Mm-hmm. And if you have some theme that was developed by a developer and developers love to like create templates and stuff and create this black box that only they have the key you know, and I don't know if this is just like ADD stuff or if they, so they can bill you. I don't think it's like they're trying to fuck you over, but it's just like a developer habit. But with Divi, I mean, it's, we're not developers. So all, all you have to do to administrate it and you just open up the module, you write the text, you create a new module. It's all kind of drag and drop. That's awesome because then that's a win for you. It's a win for the customer. It's a win for the customer of the customer that you're servicing because you, they ha- you have a faster website that looks mm-hmm. better. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's really cool. And I remember when, you remember when I was like doing this project Rise and Shine for Life? Yes. It's kind of on the back burner now, but you created this landing page for me in Divi, of course. Mm-hmm. And it was a little bit of a unique situation because there was a, a pop-up button so you click a button on the landing page to get a free email course, I think. Yeah, open, you know what? In fact, let me share screen right now so we could show the, the, the peoples. The people. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, so we're going to go move this shit. Okay, so we're going to go rise and shine for, there we go. So you did this all with Divi. It was a year ago, so it was with the old version of Divi, I think. Even. <laughs> it was a year ago. This is one of those side projects that never went anywhere. One of many. How many side projects do we have, bro? Fucking. Uh, I don't know. A lot. <laughs> a lot. Coffee Squid, Rise and Shine for Life, Divi Design Service. 
what else was there? <laughs> well, Rapid actually, I work, I, work, I work with DV Design Service. You, you were, yeah, you yeah, are. I have, I have customer, man. <laughs> Come on. All right, so check it out. So, yeah, it's a landing page, blah, blah, blah. And by the way, to illustrate what we were talking about before, if we shrink this down to mobile, my... my yeah, your picture disappear, for example, yes. because, um, yeah, it, it didn't look good on the, on the mobile and it's useless. You don't need to have like a giant picture of yourself, so... I just make yeah, that. It wouldn't make sense in the composition because it, it all depends on the landscape being like horizontal. Mm -hmm. Right. So, okay, cool. So if you click on this, it brings up, well, that's not supposed to happen. It, it keeps the background, but I think the plugins are not updated, but basically it keeps the background. It makes the background dark and then it, it brings up this little thing. So it's kind of a Ryan Levesque ask formula slash yeah. run and done it's basically pre-segmentation, right? So we yeah. want to say, okay, this site is to help people wake up early. So, okay, it's a student, entrepreneur, freelancer, employee, at a nine to five job or something else, okay? And you fill out your first name and your email address and there's some quotes. Now, can you do like a quick explanation of sort of how you did this? Because this is with Divi plus another plugin. Yes. Um, okay, so maker, for, <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Pop-up maker, which is probably the best uh, pop-up plugin for WordPress. It's free uh, first. There's a pro version as well, yeah. I think there's a pro version, never yeah. use it. I don't even know uh, what it does. Like the, the, the free version do absolutely everything. So it's perfect. And the cool thing with the, the pop-up maker is like uh, the pop-up you create uh, are created uh, based on um, a WordPress page, which means that you can use the DV Builder inside the pop-up you build. So basically the pop-up you look at now is actually uh, made with the DV Builder and two columns. On the left column, this is a gravity form. And on the right column, this is uh, like the testimonial model or like text model from DV. <clears throat> so this is a custom post. Each, each pop-up is a custom post in WordPress, right? Yes, custom page. Uh, it's, custom from, page. Yeah, yeah. it's from the, the pop-up maker uh, uh, plugin. So you go to pop-up maker and you have all pop-up click there and it lists all the pop-up and every pop-up is kind of a mini WordPress page. So you can use the DV Builder on them. And I think you had to install a plugin that allowed you to... To do that? To do yes. that. Yes. So um, I think now DV do it that natively, but I'm not like 100% sure. So um, at the time I, need, uh, I had to use uh, DV Booster, which is a paid plugin that is like 20 bucks which is amazing. It add a lot of uh, cool feature to DV. And one of the feature is the ability to use DV Builder on a custom field, custom page, right, custom, right. custom post page. And like the pop-up, the pop-up or custom post uh, page, sorry. But I think like DV did that natively, but I'm not sure. I don't want to. Probably, I haven't updated this in a yeah, yeah, so there you go. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah. Very cool. And Divi Booster is really cheap. I think it's $29. 20 yeah, 20 bucks. Completely worth, com yeah, if you're a power user, completely worth it. Oh, okay. And they, they even have this section here where anytime Divi makes an update, yeah, yeah. they'll the, add the, the yeah. old stuff. The guy uh, like update the plugin uh, regularly. So yeah. good investment. Cool. Yeah, and so you, you basically use Divi. That, that's another point, right? So Divi... It, it's not limited to what you can do immediately. There's all this other stuff that basically like, you know, when I asked you to do this, I didn't know if it was going to be possible with Divi because of the custom post issue, mm -hmm. but somebody solved that because of the strength of the community and everything like that. Yeah. And, um, yeah, the community is really, really active. So that's just this cycle back to what we were saying before. If you don't find something you can do with Divi, like it's probably someone already like, find a solution and make a plugin for it. And the API yeah. is so, so nice that it's really easy for a developer to just make whatever with DV. So if you really want something that it, nobody ever done, you can just like pay someone to do it. 100%. And this is, uh, yeah. And actually I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that like pretty soon, like pay a developer to make like a, a very specific DV model <laughs> that connect with the right. active campaign actually. For your uh, for your membership site, do you want to talk about yeah. that real quick? <clears throat> Built that with with Divi as well. 
Yeah, it's completely, uh, well, all the website I've made are, like if you go there in portfolio, you will see like all the website you have on the portfolio, they all deal with Divi. So, uh, so this is your, so, sorry to interrupt, this is your Divi design service yeah, yeah. page. And, and what's amazing too, just to illustrate what you said before that you can replicate basically anything, you took a ClickFunnels template, which they're definitely oh, yeah, very yeah. nice, like very conversion optimized, <laughs> and you recreated it line by line mm -hmm. in, yeah. in Divi. So if you go up, I think I put a link now. Uh, if you go to free DV templates and you probably can oh, free DV it. templates. Yeah. yeah. There's like some, some people asking on Facebook and was, Hey, I can't find it anymore. I was like, Oh yeah, sorry. I think I removed it for whatever reason. Yeah. The one on the left is the, the first one it was the old version. They changed it now. It was the, the old version of the click funnel thing. I was making my point at the time that um, a lot of uh, people use click funnel and it's so slow. And it, the, 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 the builder is absolutely terrible for a power it's user. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. Yeah. For, oh, for a power from, user. Okay. Yeah. For, I, I really say for a power user. Like for uh, like a, like a, a normal person, that's okay. Drag and drop, do your stuff. Like you, you can be happy with it. But for a power user, it's like absolutely terrible. Like, oh my God, it's so slow. It's terrible. You, you can't do whatever you want. It's really, really slow. Mm -hmm. And my point was that it's really slow and you can do it with DV much better and you can make it look like exactly the same. So I created yeah, this, we, this. Sorry, go ahead. No, it's okay. I just created this template to just replicate it and show people that on DV, you can do the same thing and it loads so much faster and it looks exactly the same and you don't need to pay the insane amount of money that cost uh, ClickFunnel to do the same thing. Yeah, and it's, it's loading slow shit right now because we're on the Zoom call and because I'm in Thailand, so the internet is Thailand internet. Oh yeah, and this is probably like some, some plugins that are uh, not updated as well. I think so, but it basically looks exactly the same as the- The old, the, uh, yeah. In ClickFunnels. And uh, I remember we had a bit of a, not a debate, but you know, there's always push and pull with the customer and one customer which goes back to what I was saying about switching your tech. They're like, okay, should we use click funnels? Click funnels has the two step, the, the free plus shipping module, which is really cool. Yeah. And it looks really nice. It's literally the main argument is the main argument. That was the main point in favor. And we're like, well, no, we, why, why would you pay for click funnels? I mean, we could build all of this in Davy. You have total control over your funnel, over which tech you use. You're, you're not, you don't have to use the click funnels tech. You could use everything that WordPress has to offer, which is a hell of a lot more than, than what's available in ClickFunnels. Like ClickFunnels actually is a good solution and it has its use case, you know, depending on you, on your personality and stuff and what you value. But in, in this particular case, we're like, well, okay, we could, they're like, can you build this page in Divi? And you're like, yeah, hundred percent. And it was hard to build the free plus shipping because that's just a very specific configuration of yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. And uh, basically, um, PayPal do not allow you to do that. It's, it's considered as shady. <laughs> so it's pretty Which hard part, to. Uh, um, I remember when we were trying to building the, 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 the system they do, like that you basically. Uh, uh, you don't pay anything. It's completely free. You just pay for the shipping. And so it's a form that will uh, get like all your information. Then at the end that will bill you for the, for the shipping, which is actually what they bill you for the, the thing. They just call it shipping. And I remember when we, when we were trying to do that, the, the, go, the, um, the fast and um, no, that's not the word I want to say. Uh, you have to go on different, different uh, PayPal form. Uh, it's to, like a to, form to, and only the form updates, but you're staying on the same exact page. But the form yeah, yeah. Is step and one, you, step you two. can't do that with PayPal because it's, uh, it will basically allow to do some shady stuff with PayPal. Uh, you, and they, they just like forbidden. So you can't, just, you just can't do it. So it's, it's impossible to replicate uh, using, using, using PayPal. Well, we try Even, to do it with gravity forms, right? And we were, we were using gravity form. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I, at the time too, this particular customer, I think they bought thrive cart because it, it could do almost everything. It didn't have free. But it can, yeah, but it cannot do that. Can you do the, the, the boat thing as well? No, they, they have free plus shipping now, but it, it, I believe that it'll take you to the next page or like reloads the page. Yeah. 
and it's just like this one little feature that well that's interesting because like <clears throat> natively paypal api the way paypal work do, do not allow you to do that you can't reload like uh, like a form a paypal form and change the price or change something in it so wow. i don't know how they are how, actually they don't they don't do they work with paypal click i don't think they integrate with paypal they integrate they, with your they do and i think how they do it is c kind of how how a lot of payment gateways do it now where you basically pre-approve the payment and that's the first step of the funnel. And mm. so you, you actually have to leave the site. Obviously PayPal is an offsite payment processor. You leave the, the funnel, you go to PayPal, you log in and pre-approve your payment and then you, it redirects you back to the second. So you got to leave actually anyway, the only way it's going to be on pages with Stripe or Braintree. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, so there you go. So I'm trying to zoom in on this damn free plus shipping picture. Well, I remember for this particular customer, we, we found a way to do it. <clears throat> it was basically uh, three or four different um, gravity form with three or four different uh, PayPal uh, price. And you were basically switching to one another depending on what you wanted to, uh, what you were choosing during the, during the payment. The problem is like with the click funnel thing, they will just like upsell you on something. So you will take like the free plus shipping, they will bump you with like, hey, uh, or maybe you want this. Yeah, it's like 100 bucks and you get that. And you're like, oh yeah, okay, boom. Um, so that, that, that was the, complete, the, the, the complicated thing to move from an offer to another. Correct, yeah. And then you're also, and this was a complex funnel, so there was downsells as well. Yeah, it was downsell as well. Yeah, it was... Uh, it was a pretty damn thing. <laughs> and, you know, in the end, I think what wound up happening, it, if I recall correctly, is this customer wound up using ClickFunnels Click to, for, for the page builder plus Thrivecart for the, for the cart, for the payment processing. Oh, really? Okay. It's interesting because it's okay. <laughs> so you're basically paying in that case for the, for the page builder. 100 yeah. bucks a month for a page builder. So you could do that with, with but whatever, you know. It's yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so a lot of adventures in, uh, around Divi and, and stuff. Um, man, I think we covered, is, is there anything else you could think of regarding Divi? Have you used a lot of other page builders like Beaver Builder or <clears throat> Elementor? No, I used, um, I used uh, the, the main one, like the, the super famous one. Uh, uh, Optimized Presser? No, 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 no. Ah. Um, oh. Uh oh, Leslie, Leslie moment in effect. Yeah, the, <laughs> the one I use on pretty much every, every template you buy those days, uh, they, they use this one. Um, uh, oh, visual editor. Yeah, visual editor. I, I use visual editor. <laughs> it's a huge, uh, man, it's a huge machinery, this one. It's like, you can do a lot of stuff with it. It's, uh, it's, it's a huge uh, piece of shit is what it too, is. Well, <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, uh, to me, it's too complicated and you can't, you can't uh, customize uh, the way you can do it, like with, with DV and everything. And uh, it's too slow. It's, it's too much of a big machinery. So, yeah, I play a bit with this one. I play with Thrivecart. Um, which is, Thrive Themes? Thrive Theme. Yeah, Thrive Theme, sorry. Uh, which is okay, but like, I don't really, I'm not really uh, like a, a big fan. But you can, do, you can do a lot of stuff with Thrive Theme, like mm -hmm. really. Uh, I just feel it's uh, it's not as user friendly as Divi. I play a bit with Elementor when it when it show up. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I dismiss it pretty pretty quick because uh, community community is pretty uh, uh, small. Uh, it can't do everything, and it's not as much plugin. Um, so maybe it will become. It is like a plugin. A, yeah, it is a plugin. That's the thing. Uh, yeah. So maybe it will become uh, better, but yeah, not, not as much uh, customizable that. As DV, um, that's it. The Beaver Builder never use it, so I'm there. It's pretty and as good. I say, I'm with DV since the beginning, so mm -hmm. I'm really, I'm really used to it. Uh, so yeah, I will, I will stick to it. So it's, it's, it's almost too much of a, of a, like a setup cost. It's almost too expensive time and energy wise to even consider other options unless they're an order of magnitude better. Like yeah. Elementor is cool, Beaver Builder is cool. It might be better in some respects, probably, you know, probably is, but is it in order of magnitude better to the point where you would actually say, okay, we need a switch because there's just no comparison. 
And the answer yeah, is no. Yeah. No. You, you really need to think uh, about why you want to switch. You know, is it like really good reason? <laughs> it's like your business depend on it. Is it like really like uh, an option or something that the, the, I don't think of anything that will lead you to change from DV to any other builder at this time now. I can uh, think of one reason. And I think this is one of the reasons that the authority hacker guys switched to Elementor and Astra. I don't know why they switched to Astra. I see more and more people using it recently. I have to look more into it. Um, but with Elementor, I think the one main thing that distinguishes it from the other page builder type plugins is that if you deactivate it, it's not going to leave a ton of short codes all over the place. It's going to still, and, and I might be wrong about this. I need to research it, but you know, the problem with like Divi, for example, is, uh, Oh yeah, any builder. You deactivated, it didn't work. <laughs> For sure. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't see how the Elementor can continue to work if you deactivate it. I think if I'm you... describing this problem wrong. You know what? I bet I can Google it. Elementor. Because I read like a Elementor versus Beaver Builder versus Thrive. Elementor short codes. Mess. Well, I don't I don't I don't see that as a as a like a good things to just move from a, a builder to another just because if you deactivate it your website will still work why would you deactivate your builder or maybe it was something like if you go from the visual builder back to the wordpress page it'll just like leave a ton of short codes but I'm well sure in dv if you do that it will just like it will it will put nothing on the page if you switch from dv builder to the wordpress builder like everything dv disappear right so it's just like a blank page right yeah or, or is the page gone they will just like be a blank page they will page. Uh, yeah they will have nothing nothing no content from the normal wordpress builder multi-purpose wordpress themes like divi are not the answer yeah sure I don't, I don't if, title. i don't know if we agree with that guy <laughs> well you will i mean honestly you will find uh, a pro and con for absolutely everything online Sorry. Yes. Yes. There is no answer. There's only trade-offs. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, I'll say just DV is a good is a good template. You do a lot of stuff. Uh, you probably can do uh, what you want to do with it, uh, except if you have like really super. I mean, that's my point. At one point, if you have really really super specific thing you want to do, just like work with a developer. <laughs> just hire a developer and make like a custom code like uh, something. What would you use like a a, a framework? and try to make it look like and do exactly what you want if it's so complicated. Just, just, just pay the developer to, to do your complica uh, complica complicated thing. And exactly, but and looking at Authority Hacker's Elementor review, I think they're using Elementor on this page. All you could do all of this with Divi easily, 100%. Well, this is like a custom graphic, so this isn't part of the theme anyway. This little background thing, these are custom icons. These are stars. You can use stars, <laughs> stars anywhere. Actually, I think Divi doesn't have stars. I bet there's an add-on. Oh, dude, you have add-on, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. You could do, and I remember I asked you to create, um, I don't know if you remember this, why Divi? I, I asked you to create a page um, a while back. I think back, it was like right around the time that you were leaving member fix and, and starting your new stuff. And I just wanted to demonstrate, I was already thinking about this idea to have this conversation. Oh yeah, I remember. But it's also with the old version uh, of DB. It's and a this version. is the old version, without yeah, any yeah. add-ons. This was just like messing no, not, No, it's much better. You can do more stuff. Ooh, look at that. Critical CSS, just totally not loading. There we go. <laughs> yeah, so you could do all that cool kind of like you know, because now this, the now the trend is to not just do like regular blog posts with just text and a few images. Now you got to make it for the ADD people. You got to have all these pretty images and all these pretty colors and check boxes and exclamation points and like road signs. And yeah, yeah, absolutely. All this stuff, and yeah, you could build all that. Now these need a little bit of like padding adjustment. Yeah, and. Uh, yeah. As I say, like the plugin being dated like a like a fair amount of of, of time. Don't don't blame the plugin. Don't blame the plugin. <laughs> sure. 
<laughs> you designed it, own it. <laughs> well, you can, um, every, everything you have on the Elementor, uh, like authority factory, authority website, uh, hacker. Factory. Authority hacker. Authority factory hacker dot com. FD. Two thousand. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you can do that. You can do that with DVs, no problem. Like list, divider, like video, image, just text. This is, yeah. It's nothing here that you cannot do with DV. I'm sure they have their reason. You know, maybe they have a deal with uh, Elementor. You don't know. Uh, well, you know they. Yeah, I mean they look. This is the first thing they do on the site. Get your copy yeah. of Elementor. There we go. So there's um, they have skin. <coughs> what, what's the word I'm looking for? They they they. They're they're biased, I guess you could say, because they have money. Uh, dude, they sell they sell how to make like an authority website, uh, making a living selling uh, uh, affiliate links. So, <laughs> I mean, it didn't it didn't mean that Elementor is not good. Not at all, yeah. not at all. And I think a lot of it too is f you have to think about who is the person using it. Is it somebody? Yeah, absolutely. Because mm -hmm. Elementor really is quite drag and drop. The Divi visual editor, it's kind of drag and drop, but there's a little more tweaking. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you, um, let me just scroll through this real quick. This is a monster of a post. Look at this thing. Hey, you, know, you, know, you know what it is, bro. It's, uh, it's authority hacker. It's, yeah, it's an authority post. It's an authority post about hacking authority. Oh, this is cool. So this is one of the things that authority hacker does when they test different plugins and page builders against each other. I thought this was really smart and not, not only smart, but actually like a useful test. They would take the Trello landing page, which is a cool landing page, like well done custom design landing page. And they would try to recreate it using like thrive elementor, Divi, blah, blah, blah. And then they would see the page speed and then they would see how it looks on mobile and whether or not like all the paddings and everything look good and how long it took. Mm -hmm. And I think Elementor like won when they did that test more or less, but anyway. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's completely possible. And what I want to ask you about, and maybe we should start wrapping this up, is about your new website. Maybe you could talk about your new membership site that you, you're starting and especially as it relates to Divi and how you used it and everything. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, well, I guess you will need to probably log into it. Otherwise, no, it's not going to, you're not going to see much. Uh, so you can log with, I will just send you. I, I have logins. No. Yeah, I anymore. do. Yeah, not I do. Anymore. I, te not anymore. I tested it today. I tested it today. Trust Did you me. change it today? Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I'm going to test my log. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> let's 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 try that. Let's do, uh, this one. And, and God, everything loads so slow when you have Zoom running. Yep. Okay, I'll just uh, Telegram you. Uh, Telegram's on my phone, bro. Can you put it? In the chat. Well, it's it's okay. You're going to. It's not difficult. <laughs> no worry. Oh man, I gotta type all of this stuff now. Come on. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> well, that's too bad. The connection is slow. <clears throat> well, Zoom doesn't get interrupted when yeah. we're like, loading stuff, so that's why that's it's like taking yeah, yeah. the bandwidth. Yeah, that's true. And it's uh, okay. it's it's a Phuket. Uh, Look at Telecom idea. <laughs> 2.2G. Two, two, two or not. Nah. Or <laughs> So yeah, basic landing page. I'll just explain it. Uh, How did you do this effect? I just, uh, for my own curiosity, uh, the which one? waves. Oh, that's waves. cool. That's, uh, that was on the, it's one of the last iteration from, from DV there. Now between model, um, between section, not model, sorry, between mm -hmm. section, you can, you can create those divider and they have like 10 different divider. So now you can really make like super cool effect uh, between section, it's pretty cool. Dude, I, I've learned a lot in this episode about all the stuff that DB can do that I haven't been using that I'm gonna be using now. Yeah. You told me about it. 
it's uh, as I say, it's really for a user because uh, if if you don't go really deep into it and just look at everything you can do, it was just like it's like the A/B testing thing. You can A/B test any any model on DB. It's not that much people that that, that use it, but you can. So yeah, basic landing page all made with DB, all uh, mobile, responsive, all good <clears throat> with a gravity form at the end that uh, allow you to. Uh, Sign up for <coughs> our beta, 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 beta test phase, <coughs> and it's a watercolor uh, uh, community. Really? Yeah. I just, I just. That's why you have that to put your. Is that what it's here. called? LearnWatercolors.net. Yes. <laughs> Very clever, man. I know. So that's it, and so this website is made with uh, with DV, obviously, and uh, I use. Um, Active member to sixty, and active campaign to manage the the user. The membership. Yeah, yeah, membership plugin. And membership oh, and you've got a really interesting forum too. It's it's I. You're the first person that I've seen actually use this forum plugin, but it looks yes. really good. Um, so it's named uh, Double P Foro, F R O R O Foro. And um, so, yeah, so basically when you, if you want to implement a, a forum into your WordPress, uh, you don't have many solutions. You have BBPress, which is the WordPress own uh, uh, forum plugin. <laughs> uh, that you can use, it's free, it works, no problem. Um, and uh, it links directly with your WordPress user. So you don't need, you don't need to uh, have like a, a plugin that will link your, uh, Form user to your WordPress user. It's completely integrated with WordPress. So you sign up one time with WordPress and you're already included into the forum. Um, then you have a bunch of other plugins that do forum thing uh, uh, for WordPress. Uh, I think I try all of them and I finally uh, choose to work with WP4, uh, which is a really good one, stable, and it basically gives you all, pretty much all the options that you will have with like a professional, uh, dedicated, um, sorry, uh, form plugin With like IP form. board or something. Yes, so that would take more. A lot of uh, people that have community website, membership website, they use um, IP board as a form um, because IP board is like one of the best uh, uh, software for a form that are available in the market. The only thing is like it costs two or three hundred dollar to get it that you have to renew every year. Then, if you want to connect it to your WordPress, you need to buy an SSO plugin, and that SSO plugin would would cost like few hundred dollar more uh, to to be able to do that. Can you send uh, me working logins in the chat? Oh, sorry. Yes, sure. it's like Leslie dot plus yes. Yaya. Yes. Exactly. Or is it Yana? No, no. It's uh, Y A Y A. Yaya. So true. Uh, no. Oh, let me double check that because, as I say, I, I remove all the the testing the testing <coughs> login. Uh, Why don't today. you share your screen, bro? Oh yeah, oh. sure. I absolutely, can do that. <laughs> Completely forgot. <coughs> you can do shit like that. Uh, let me just check quickly. Just take the porn off your screen first <laughs> for the kids. The kids. Uh, Oh man, excited to go to Chiang Mai in December. Yes, yes, very, very excited. So no, the, this login is still there, should work. Just share your screen. Bro. Okay, I will just open, go into window, learn what I color. Like that. Up. Mm -mm -mm. <clears throat> oh, damn it. I'm just going to play some weight music while you're getting your shit in order.
you doing over there? Yeah, almost there. There we go. Play a little John Mayer. That's the one. Your favorite. My stupid. Okay, I'm good. Let me share my screen. We got to be the craziest, craziest episode we've ever done. So much crazy stuff happening. Divi and guitars and share my screen. Watercolors and screen sharing. Ta da! <clears throat> so you can see it. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, good. Okay, cool. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, so, well, the whole thing is a DV, uh, it's a DV template, <coughs> obviously. Uh, and like those information are gathered using the Active Member 360 uh, membership plugin. Uh, so we go. Um, so you have like <coughs> the different model uh, you can use in your, in your community. That is core, latest course. You. I like how you made your modules when you mouse over them, they highlight. Yes, well, uh, there's actually a new option that uh, DV introduced uh, to model uh, as well. So you can make the, you can make the, this is actually uh, the column. So you can, you can make basically any section, any model, any row, any column uh, over it. You can make an over effect on any row, column, or model. Nice. Yes, and a link too. So like the whole thing is a link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so latest course. So this is, and you know, cause obviously we, we do membership sites mostly. This is kind of, you sort of modeled this whole thing on the member site academy. Which yes. Is like most of the members there do too, using yeah, all yeah. different tech. Well, they, they change a lot their design and the way they present uh, things since. Uh, yeah, actually, they've updated it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, mine do not look anymore <laughs> the, way, the way they look uh, on their website. <clears throat> but it's okay for a community. It just, like, it just, just works perfectly. Mm -hmm. So a few cool things here are, um, okay, so I'll start with... Um, so I use the I use the um, the pop-up maker, uh, for example, to uh, uh, contact the support. So if you click if you click here, you, this is a pop-up maker pop-up, and mm -hmm. I use the DV Builder inside, and I, I use the the code model to call the uh, active uh, the AC two sixty uh, avatar of the user, nice. and I use the uh, as as well the active member. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, shortcut to uh, get the name of the person that is connected mm -hmm. to make it more uh, personal. Uh, this uh, widget here uh, is, a, is a global one. So if I change anything here, it would change everywhere on the website because this widget is on pretty much every page. So we make it like a, we make it um, global. Uh, this one here, actually, it's something you cannot do natively with DV. It's uh, it's two, it's two model uh, in one. So this is the uh, the countdown model, and on the bottom, it's a text model. And I just like make make it make them look like it's just one big model. <clears throat> and to do that, you I mean, use, you cannot make it like one module split down the center. It's just two modules stacked on top. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, Why would that, you want them as one? Uh, because this one is as well uh, one that is uh, spread on the website, so I can use this one on different different page, uh, and I, I don't want to I don't want to use like uh, one two model every time. So what I <clears throat> what I use here is AC shortcode, which is a, a DV plugin that allow me to put a model inside model. So I will right. basically I will build this one, and it will create a shortcode to show it. That's pretty cool. Uh, actually, every uh, every course model like those those box are shortcode that they are all uh, created with AC shortcode. So I can show this exact uh, box anywhere anywhere I want with just one shortcode. 
Uh, so we go, let's take a look at the course page, <clears throat> which is basically, which is cool as well, because as you, as, as you can see, I uh, show some um, uh, course box on the dashboard. I show so course box on the course page and maybe other in other page. So using short code to show them uh, uh, allow me to have one place when I, where I can modify them. So I can go to AC short code, choose the one I want to uh, trick, and it will just mm -hmm. like spread everywhere. It's pretty cool. Uh, so there we go. So just like a simple page with all the model. Now just let's go watch one. <clears throat> <clears throat> Are you bored, bro? Not at all. <laughs> Coffee is still in effect. Ooh. Yeah, it's really slow on my, my side as well. And I'm beyond a VPN, so maybe not help. So page R, like a big giant video. Uh, a breadcrumb here. Course overview. Another... Uh, use of the of the course model here uh, so you can watch the next one in line so so for that one you just insert a short code yes on every a, page right it, yes it's, it's just a short code here so it's basically universal in this yes in a different way yeah or a different mm -hmm. method of implementing yeah yeah uh so we go and like for example here i use the w, wp4 uh, um, short code to show uh, like a box to add a topic directly in the form. It's pretty cool. Uh, and the then, purpose of that is to is to create engagement around this particular course, right? Yes, exactly. It's mean, uh, yeah. If you wanna basically, like every time someone uh, asks a question about this specific course, it will it will show here. So you will have the list of every topic, every question that have been asked about this How'd class. You do that. It's a it's a short code from do it before. Okay, yeah. and then so if they post a topic here on this page, it'll appear in the in the in the forum in here. Yes, in the forum corresponding to this course, right? Yes, yes. Ah, uh -huh. every 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 forum has a ID number, and with the short code, I sh uh, choose to show uh, the 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 ID number that corresponds to this lesson. Gotcha. <clears throat> Yeah, so it's, it's pretty cool, and it's free. Uh, so let's let's take a look at it, how it looks like. Oh yeah, I'll show you like another cool stuff as well. You got to show me that gravity form stuff that you did. Oh no, you got rid of that, didn't you? No, I oh, no, I use it completely now. Okay. So, yeah. So this the is one the one that you showed me in Vietnam. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the forum. Uh, you can steal all of this. Or if you want to go deep into the stylings, no problem. Uh, it's available. Uh, and you can see like the main course with all the sub uh, lesson here. Nice. Uh, so there we go. I can see like someone, someone is there doing something. <clears throat> and main so, course is just like the general overview of like learn how to learn watercolor stuff. Yeah, the main course. The, 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 the main course about how to, the basic of watercolor. Uh, gotcha. On the top of that, we'll have, we'll have master class and, and super specific course about mm -hmm. specific techniques later. So yeah, the whole form is really really cool. Uh, it's really work. It really worked like a normal form. Like it's, it's really nice. Uh, so we go and okay. Let me show you the <clears throat> the gravity form thing. So one thing we want to do on this uh, uh, DV website is uh, give the ability to a member to submit their exercise when, because on some class, uh, yeah, like this one, they have exercise to do, uh, they, they can perform and they can get feedback from it. So we, we needed to find a way to uh, allow the user <coughs> to send a picture of what they've done and uh, for us to give them a feedback and it will be like a thread. So other user can see the different uh, submission from other member. Uh, to get an idea of uh, you know what to do so like if i'm a member and i go through this course you yep. give me an exercise and i paint yep. it yeah and then i submit it here on this like i take a picture with my phone and then submit it here on this yes exactly so on this one you have the course overview then you have the exercise we explain you here what to do 
then at the very end of the of the course you will uh, find again the the form uh, section where you can uh, post your topic and ask your question related to the course and you have a, a new one a uh, new tab that is uh, submit your exercise so to do this for example I use the AC shortcode as well which is basically uh, the this is this is a this is a uh, um, a short code from do it before and this one is a is a gravity form that I put in AC uh, um, plugin so it's now a short code I can put it there so I use the <clears throat> the DV uh, tab uh, model and I put like short code into the two, inside the two tab that's that's why yeah, that's why it looks like this it's pretty cool and 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 the the DV module is just a tab tabs module <clears throat> yeah, the DV module is just the tab module that contains the two shortcodes, the forum shortcode and uh, the gravity form shortcode. So basically, is there this... a way? Sorry, go ahead. No, I go. I was, this is a very kind of specific nitpicky yeah. question, but is there a way to like split? The, I, I'm sure you've already thought of this. Like you split the thing down the middle, the whole module, and you align the text, center align the text uh, equidistant from the center and from the sides. So, because right now you see it's like the blue highlighted tab and there's white space after it on the right. Yeah. Um, I wonder, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's CSS, it's completely feasible. Uh, it's just like super low on my list, huge list of stuff <clears throat> that we, we, we need to do. We still have a shitload of uh, video to record and everything. So yeah, it's good. like a cosmetic kind of thing, but yeah, it's possible. Uh, but it's CSS. possible. Yeah, it is completely possible. So this one is a, is a gravity form um, <clears throat> that work with uh, gravity view, which is another plugin uh, that you can buy and that will basically allow you to show gravity form submission anywhere on the website with short code. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so it's a basically uh, this gravity form has a hidden field that will be populated automatically with the email address of the member. So you don't see this one, but it allow me to know who uh, posts something, and it's also connect with uh, Active Campaign. So when someone posts something here, I can add a tag that this uh, this user just submit this exercise, and I can have an automation that will send you like, hey, we receive your feedback. We will, you know, do something about it. <clears throat> so they will post uh, their uh, image here. They will post their comments about the exercise. Post it. Then here down, it will show like the image they just post with their comments. Then um, Yana and I on the WordPress backend, uh, we can go to the uh, uh, gravity form uh, submission and look at the last submission, see that someone submitted uh, this feedback and we can answer it directly from there and post our own feedback and it will just like show, just be uh, just uh, under the, the, the person uh, picture with uh, highlighted uh, in red what we uh, say about the, the, the submission. So the thing about that, it's, um, this is the solution I find with my level of, uh, of coding and everything. This is the, the best solution I find to, to achieve this. Allow member to submit image uh, and us be able to uh, uh, answer those uh, submissions with comments. <clears throat> the first thing I've done before that was to just set up a discuss uh, uh, short code here. So discuss is a decentralized uh, comments, comment system mm -hmm. that allow, allow people to comment on anything. <clears throat> so I first set up a discuss system here, but the problem with discuss is that they have a bug that when you use the shortcut, the embed, the, dis the embed discuss, uh, people cannot sign up. <clears throat> For whatever reason, it asks to uh, fill a captcha and it's just invisible. And they know about it and they don't know how to fix it. And it's just like, you can't use discuss uh, in an embed version. Uh, people just and you don't own it. it. No, yeah. and that's the other thing. You don't own it. And the, 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 the stuff that I uh, posted are kind of uh, accessible you know I don't really find like how they manage the data and everything and how where it will show because they have an automatic discovery kind of thing so and they can ban you and they can for ban you at any reason. time for whatever reason they put ads 
<laughs> in the Pradats, yes. In the Pradats. <laughs> So and yes, so we also try to use the the, the basic WordPress command system, uh, but it wasn't working well for whatever reason. Using uh, uh, I tried to use shortcut there and to use code and everything, and it, it just wasn't working. Uh, I really I tried everything and it wasn't working. And another thing is that I want to be able to know who do what here. So I need to catch the email. I need to use uh, to connect it with the active campaign, so I can uh, trigger tags, add, adding tags, removing tags, triggering automation, and everything. So the best way is to do that. But in the future, I will probably definitely uh, pay someone to custom code uh, uh, a DV uh, model that will just do that. But like, is that what you were talking about in the model? That's one of the stuff I was talking about. Yeah. Okay. That's one of them. That's one of them. Now, do you have a visual example of the thread that you're talking about here? No, because I, we, just, we just opened today to our beta tester. So I remove all the example already. Ah, Sorry. okay. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's active now, so I can't, I can't post anything here. But basically, the gravity view just displays their submission. Yes. But it looks like, it's a, it looks like a comments thread. Yeah, it looks like a comment. Yeah, it's, uh, it's looked like a comment. So that's the, that's, the, that's the cool thing here. Very cool. And um, yeah, well, that's, that's pretty much it. It's a, it's a really simple um, community website, membership website. Not about simple. <laughs> I mean, you oh, just, just described a lot of freaking <clears throat> technical <Yeah>. stuff. But. <clears throat> I spent a lot of time. Like the whole website is connected with Thrivecard. So when someone sign up, it will add tag and go to automation and blah, blah, blah. It's like... Ooh, <laughs> yeah, it was like, uh, it was a lot of work, like uh, really a lot of work. And you know what, <clears throat> I had, um, what I wanted to do is to allow the user to mark a lesson as watched. And that's, that's the second yes. thing. I need someone to, to code something for me. Uh, because one of, I come from Drip and I switched to Active Campaign uh, for two reasons. Uh, the first one is it's cheaper to use Active Campaign at the beginning of a community. Uh, because the thing is, like Drip, you can use it for free uh, until you get more than 100 uh, sign up. Mm -hmm. Then you need to pay. But the first tier, the first package for Drip is 50 bucks per month. Straight. There, there's, no, there's no before. It's like 50 bucks. Just after the 100. If you have 101 user, it's 50 bucks. But yeah. Active Campaign, you have no free version. But the first uh, tier is like uh, $9 per month. Yeah. And you can have like 500 users. So we don't have 500, we have more than 100. So I switch to FT campaign because of that. And the second thing is it allow me to use uh, Active Member 360, which is the membership plugin we use. Yes. Um, but and the benefit of Active Member 360 versus other membership plugins, in the, your opinion? Oh, well, um, okay. So first it's for power user only, like 100%. If you don't know what you're doing, if you don't know how to use automation marketing, don't use it. <laughs> it's yeah. not for you. Or pay someone else, yeah. <laughs> or pay someone that know what they, what, what they do. Uh, it's an amazing membership plugin. It allows you to do super customized thing on your website. Like you can really custom, customize the whole experience for every of your member based on tag and everything. But you need to be a power user. That's not like a simple plugin. It's not simple. It's complicated. Uh, but it's amazing. So it's, it's kind of where, what you were saying. So uh, if, if you want to become like a big, big thing, like a big community, like do really cool stuff, uh, at one point you will need to switch to a, a plugin like uh, Active Member 360 to be able to do that cool stuff that Pretty other plugins do not allow to do. Um, so yeah, so the, the, what I was one, what I was wanted to say is like I come from Drip, and uh, both Active Campaign and Drip have plugin that you can connect to Gravity Form. Uh, so basically, when someone sign up, uh, it can trigger something to Drip or trigger something to Gravity Form. Like add a uh, tag, add a custom add a, field. Yes. So add the thing, to a list, remove yes, from the list. Exactly. So mm -hmm. the thing with the uh, Drip plugin, the cool thing, the Gravity Form Dream plugin, is you can add and remove tag. Within the within the plugin, but you cannot do that with the Active Campaign plugin. You can only add tag for whatever weird reason. So there's no remove tag option. You have to add a tag that then removes a tag on the back end, right? 
Yeah, yeah, that's so weird. I mean, I, I don't get it. So I, I post several posts, like pretty much everywhere on Gravity Phone and everything, like, hey guys, I mean, <laughs> where is the remove tag? It's so weird. I mean, you have to create like an automation to remove a tag. That's, that's so mm. like not user friendly. It's so weird. And I don't, want, I don't want to do that. And I need this to be able to do my watch, unwatch uh, um, uh, class thing. Because what I'm going to do is to basically uh, put here like a Gravity Form uh, that will. Uh, um, get the email address of the user. It will be hidden, so I know who it is, who is this person. And it will be just like a toggle, um, like a drop list of like watch, mark as watch, mark as unwatched. So if you select the mark as watch, it will automatically add a tag. Lesson X watched it. Right. And, and you select the other one, it will just remove this tag. And with oh, this, nice. okay. yeah, it's simple, but it works. And with this, I can basically change anything on this page. So I can make this, uh, this model here transparent, or I can put like a big icon, like watch. Uh, I can do a lot of stuff based on the thing, but there is no remove tag on the active campaign plugin uh, for Gravity Form. So I cannot do that. So what I've done, uh, I've done a test, obviously, where it was like, <laughs> so complicated i make a test where basically when you click uh watch it will add the tag watch lesson x and i have an automation uh that will trigger every time you click on unwatch it will trigger an automation that will remove the tag watch and add another tag and i was trying to play with this but at the end i was like okay so we're going to have like 30 lesson 30 lesson on the main course it's mean that they're going to have like 30 automation just to remove a tag and what <laughs> no i'm not going to do that and while i was trying this at the end i, I make an automation that was working i was like okay it worked and i was trying like playing with it and at one point it just stopped working so i was like oh you ran into the limit the oh, user limit yeah i have no idea so it wasn't working <laughs> so i was like i was clicking like watch and i was looking at active campaign at the same time and i see the tag get added I was like, okay so that worked but the automation wasn't triggered i was like what the fuck uh, it was like it just like it was out of my mind. It was like no error, no nothing. It was what the hell happening here? And I have to talk with the with the um, the support and like guys, what what happened? And they, oh yeah, you know, like if a if a, if a contact in Active Campaign trigger an automation more than ten times, it stopped working for twenty four hours. Uh, oh. Okay, I kind of see where you're going with that, you know, like for spam and stuff sure, like sure, that. Sure. But can you just like put somewhere in the dashboard like, hey, you reached the level. You yeah, know, yeah. <laughs> so I can understand what, what didn't work because it was like, eh. So, okay, at the end, my point is like, this thing could work if they add the remove tag option into the plugin. But uh, otherwise, it would not work. So I, my, what I was saying is like, I'm probably going to pay someone to just make it a DD plugin that will connect with AC directly with just a toggle button, like on, off, like watch, unwatch. And it would just send the tag automatically. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And it's cool too, because if you're using active member and everything is related to, to active campaign, you could do kind of a member site academy style thing where you have a little bookmark tab and you can like bookmark lessons and you can yeah. come back and see all of your bookmarked lessons yeah. and you can see like a, a progress bar and it's all done programmatically based on data that you're pulling from active campaign and from your user metadata inside yeah. of WordPress. Absolutely. Yeah. As I say, like, um, I, um, AC 260 is really, really powerful as, uh, it's not for everybody, but like, if you know what you're doing, you can really completely have like a custom experience for every of your user and that's really really cool yeah. and we we have experience from from member fix uh communicating with their development team which is a brother brother team bob and yeah yeah they're really responsive yeah they're really responsive and they're they're very helpful and it's like a pretty boutique operation it's not like a big big ass marketing i don't even think they do any marketing really it's like all word of mouth mostly yeah well, that makes sense <laughs> that completely makes sense it's not that expensive. It's like, uh, I remember it's like, uh, you can pay per month. It's like 17 bucks per month or per year. It's like two or 300. Great Facebook community. <laughs> hmm? Great, great Facebook community. Super yeah, helpful as Facebook. well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, um, 
<laughs> laugh when I tell you this, but I've made a decision, and, and if Cloud actually implement this, <laughs> but, uh, but um, I decided to uh, build a Labo's membership site. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, I decided it's, it's probably going to be olavoonline.com. Olavo.com. Olavoforlife.com. JJJforlife.com. But uh, it's, uh, it's, 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 well, first of all, first of all everybody, everybody says like online, online Keenan online, 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 and, uh, you know, Keenan online. online. And there's, then there's a lot of wow. Again, there's like an action. action. You can't, you can't, can't use that because that's trademark. That's trademark. I stop hearing you, bro. How about now? Yeah, perfect. Okay, where, where did I leave off? Uh, just now, you were saying like uh, everybody has this uh, uh, class online, and it was about, and it was like blah 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 and blah, blah. <laughs> and um, yeah. But so like I, one of the top guys, one of the top Brazilian jiu-jitsu guys in the world, who also has an online academy. I'm not going to say his name, but his his membership site is like, you go on the back end and you're like, this is nothing special, and it doesn't have to be. That's the whole point, and mm. why I decided. To, to do it and to help Olavo. And the thing is like, we talked about it and we came to the conclusion that in order for us to actually do this and to actually make it work, I have to basically do everything other than, which is fine. That's, that's totally fine. That's the arrangement other than uh, uh, doing the actual techniques, demonstrating the actual techniques. So we basically just need the site. He already has the, the audience which is all his students and all his affiliates and Carlson, Carlson Gracie's here now, Carlson. And like, I don't think it's going to be hard to fill the membership with enough people to, to basically give him like a nice uh, income and to create, you know, to, to branch out and share his jujitsu with the world. Um, it's just going to be basically filming the techniques and we put together the membership site and the marketing should be actually not so hard in this case. Yeah. But filming all the shit, filming all the shit, huge dude. That's going to be a huge task. We're probably going to have to hire a video guy, but there's a lot of video guys here who, who will work for cheap or for free. Maybe we give them a percentage or something like that. Um, even today we did a technique that uh, I don't even know who the guy is, but just came in and was like, Hey, can I shoot a technique? And yeah. So, yeah, okay. That's the main, that's the main thing. I mean, now that I built completely from zero to finish a uh, membership website, the video part is wow. <laughs> that's the yes. that's a Editing. monster oh that's just like sure you, you can do shit video which is 99 percent of what people do uh, on membership website like uh, they give the content they give you what you pay for but like in a very very shitty way that's bad bad audio uh shitty video and it's just terrible it's just terrible but if you yep. want to do like good production oh, man well first you need to invest in the camera well, we, yes. we've, we've done that. You need to invest in a, in a tripod, a professional one. So we've done that here. Yeah. And you need to invest into mic, professional mic. So we, we've done that too. And, and you need the software and you need to spend time. And, yeah. that's, and the rendering is, oh my God, the rendering. <laughs> <laughs> and we render, we, I mean, yeah. It's, the rendering is like so, so, so long. Yeah. It sounds so, like a horror movie. The rendering. Yeah, but definitely is the, the thing that, uh, that takes the, the most time. Then when everything is done uh, and you use like a, a, a membership plugin like a AC260 and an active campaign, man, your brain is like, like, oh my God, all the stuff I can do. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I mean, it's like, you can, it's just insane. You can like custom target everything. So, yeah. Amazing. Well, well, dude, that's going to be a massive project that you get into. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be as big as. Uh, yes, it's going to be. It's going to be a serious commitment, but I don't think it's going to be that complicated uh, on one angle, which is the marketing angle. I think it's it's actually easy to build something. 
in a way like you, you're build you build a site blah 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 it's great you got a beautiful site okay now you got to get people to like give you money in exchange for the value that you're providing them yeah, and that's sure. assuming that they want the thing that you built we already know that people <laughs> want to learn jujitsu from Malabo. i mean he's a world-class black belt he's, he started brazilian Thai. he's like one of the ogs of fucking brazilian jujitsu back in the day really oh, ggc.com <laughs> 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 Why is that so funny? <laughs> Allbgg.com. <laughs> no, no, no. It's just, it's, it sounds like half porn, half uh, sports. It's weird. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, no, I see what you mean, and um, I, I, I completely feel your enthusiasm and everything. I was like so fucking pumped up when I started the whole thing. Then all the small detail, detail add up. Yes, like, yes. Pop, 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 and you're like, oh my god, I didn't think about that, and. Oh, I'm going to I'm going to connect like drive cards for the payments. It's going to be so so cool, automatic. Then you have to do all the automation automation into drive card. Where yeah. you add the tag, remove the tag, and everything. And you're like, okay, cool, I'm done with that. Then you test your user journey, and you're like, oh, what happens if they need to reset your password? Mm -hmm. Oh, damn, I didn't think about that. So you need Slower. to do this. And like ah, and the fucking email that I send all the time. Someone visits the passport, you receive an email. Where does fucking email come from? Can I style it and blah 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 and. So, well, you yeah. know what's really amazing is um, I ha I've made this discovery. It's, it's really it's crazy. It's called a team. <laughs> yeah, cool. And, and, well, they, <laughs> and there's this magical thing you can do where you like tell them to do shit and they'll do it for you. That's amazing. And you don't have to do it yourself. Yeah, but I'm a team of one. So I just look at myself in the mirror and it's like, do this. <laughs> no, I don't want. But yes, you want. And Stand and by to get <laughs> For nine hours per day for the next six months. So yeah, well, to wrap up the whole thing, like Div is amazing, and you can do pretty much everything you want with it. So just go for it. Yeah, get Divi, man. Like fuck everything else. Forget about Elementor and Schmelementor and Beaver Builder. That sounds kind of pornographic too. It's, it's like it's like a Lego set that you buy to buy like to build like fake plastic vaginas. Beaver Builder. <laughs> Learn Jiu Jitsu with the Olavo Builder. Olavo Builder. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, that's going to be funny to film all that shit, dude. <laughs> I th man, it's gonna be so. It's gonna be great, especially if if uh, Manjula is here. Like, I, he's gonna be here for for a while. Um, and if we can find a good videographer who, and obviously, like, we have to arrange like who gets what percentage, like, make it financially worth worthwhile to everybody involved primarily to, to Alavo, but I just think about it like this, this is my thinking mark from a marketing perspective is he has students in like Russia. He has an academy in Russia, several. He has academies in Germany yeah. and he's going to be opening more and more affiliations. Well, all those people, they want to learn from him. You know, he's, he's the man. Yeah. Uh, if you take a private with, I had a private with Alavo today, man, like it just blows your mind every time. And it's like basic, you know, amazing jujitsu, meat and potatoes, like that he's been doing for like 30 fucking years, you know, on the hardest mats in the world. So, and there, there's your marketing right there. Like there's nothing else you have to say. Right. So, um, I think that part will be easy getting members. And once we have revenue coming in with an MVP, then you can start doing more hmm. complex stuff as well. So I agree. Wish us a lot of luck. Absolutely. I will I'm probably going to be there when you start this shit. Yeah. So you're coming in January to Phuket? Yeah. After, after two months in, in Chiang Mai, I'll be there. Once the burning and the rendering is completed. Yes. Bro, thank you so much for your time and for your <coughs> peace and for your opinions. No problem. For me, this was very, very valuable. I hope for anybody who's actually watched this whole fucking thing that they found it very valuable. Oh, sure. And honestly, we touched... Like a little bit what you can do with DV. There's much more. There's much, much more. more. Yeah, yeah, Much yeah. more. All right, bro. Thank you so much. Us. Sawadee Yep. See you. See you later, alligator.